This week on Sport Fishing, we're up in Northern California. See the Golden Gate Bridge right behind me. We're in the back of the bay right now looking for stripers, and that's what we're gonna start off doing. So hopefully we'll get some nice stripers, maybe a halibut or two, you never know what to expect. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. That's a nice vermilion right there. Yeah, this is what fishing's like. I have been fishing along the Pacific coast my entire life. Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. Tiburon, California, Northern California. Right now we're catching little stripers. Looks like this is a little halibut as well. Yeah, we got a keeper halibut. He's 22 and an eighth. Looks like we're close. I think it's short. It's a keeper, 18 and a quarter. Not the biggest stripers, but action. Bay Area action. All strikes. Caught <laughs> in the bay, juvenile.
Okay, we just made a little move. We were inside the bay um, early morning, and now it's late morning, and we slid out. We went underneath the Golden Gate Bridge. It was really cool. Now we're gonna start rock fishing. So I've got two bucktails on here with little baits on them, and see if I can get me some rock fish. What do you call what do you call this? Red snapper vermilion. Vermilion. Surprise out here. That we call black rock fish. Looks like I got a little. I think I got a little rockfish going here. Let's see what I got. Let's see what we got here. There we go. On the bucktail. Yeah. What's this? Sea trout or a gremlin. Oh, a gremlin? Yeah. Good to go. Is that legal or yeah. too small? No, it's good. They gotta be 12 inches. Cool. Right, well that's my first one of those. So Skipper made a move. We were fishing inside the bay getting those little stripers. We got a few legals, even my dad got a legal halibut in there. And now we're outside, went past the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. Now we're out here fishing for rockfish. So we're gonna do this for a while and then hopefully get everybody their limits of rockfish and then we're gonna go look for some link time. So that's the game plan now. The weather settled down a little bit. Earlier this morning we couldn't come out here. That's why we went for the stripers. But now that the conditions are getting better and the weather's coming down, hopefully we'll get a bunch of rockfish. We'll see what we do. Here in this particular tank, we have uh, flat fish. You know, sometimes scientists are accused of calling fish all kinds of strange things, but this is very descriptive. As you can see, these are flat fish. They have both eyes on the same side of their head. We even have some halibut. The interesting thing about these fish is they start out as babies hatching out of their egg, looking like regular little fish with an eye on each side of its head. But at about 30 days, in the case of the halibut, one of those eyes migrates to the other side so that it lays on its side then and it becomes a flat fish. <laughs> Another black fish. Fishing on the bottom. Here I got another rock fish coming here. See what this one is. See what this guy is. Huh. Back to back. This is not the same fish. That's a different fish. Another sea trout. So I've never caught one before, and now I've caught two at one, two in about two minutes. So that's pretty cool. All right, well, let's take a little break from the action here aboard the California Dawn and go to the tackle box to give you a good look at the gear we're using for today's trip. Today in the Tackle Box, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing today, fishing out of Emeryville. And I'll tell you, every time I come out of the Bay Area, I really have no idea what we're going to be fishing for. There's lots of different species to fish for, fish inside the Bay, fish outside the Bay. Even outside the Bay, you got the lingcod, you got the rockfish. Sometimes there's salmon, sometimes there's even albacore, and I've caught them all fishing up here. Now on today's trip, we have some rough weather first thing in the morning and the skipper gets a report that the weather is going to settle down about 10 o'clock. So we start off first thing inside the bay drifting for stripers. And fishing for stripers, you need lighter gear. I won't say really light gear, but you need lighter gear like 20 pound outfit. Something like this works out nice. Small conventional reel. Even a level wine reel will work out fine. And a rod that's designed for 20 pound test line. Make sure when you look at a fishing rod, if it says 10 to 30 pound, it means it's a really good 20 pound rod. Whatever that number is in the middle is what that rod's designed for. So 
So something like this for stripers would be perfect. Now as far as hooks, you want to use the Mustad. I like these black nickel hooks. You want a size 2 or a size 1 for the anchovies up here. They have huge anchovies up in Northern Cal. And every time I've been out there, I've just been surprised how big those anchovies are. So a big hook will work out fine. Again, a size 2, size 1 would be fine. If you want to bring a size 4 in case they're small baits, bring one. But um, again, I've never seen really small anchovies. I'm sure they get them, but I just haven't seen them on the trips I've been on. Now, after fishing inside the bay and the weather settles down, we'll head offshore. And I don't mean like far, like tuna marlin offshore. I just mean out by the Fairlawn Islands. And that's where the big lingcod and nice big schools of rockfish live. And there's lots of ways to catch lingcod. Something like this would be way too light. You want a gear that's gonna, a reel that's gonna carry 30 and 40 pound test line would be more ideal for that. So save this light gear for just inside the bay for the stripers. Or if you get in the shallow water rockfish, then you can use that. But targeting lingcod, you want something like 30 and 40 pound tests. And the way I like to fish for them is with a metal jig. Now you can catch them on live baits, it works fine. Cut baits work good too. But I tell you, using a jig, you're gonna catch more consistent lingcod and bigger ones too. And the way I like to use this is let it go all the way to the bottom, hit the bottom, come up one or two cranks, just move that rod up and down a little bit, let that jig flutter. If I don't get bit after doing that twice, put the reel in gear, crank as fast as I can, about eight to 10 cranks, let that jig dart up. When it stops up here, put it in free spool and let it flutter down and be ready to get bit. You can get bit on the grind up and you can get bit on the fall back down. Once you get bit by a lingcod, put, keep the reel in gear and just whine. Don't try to set the hook or anything. Just keep whining, keep tension on there. As the fish is shaking down there with the jig, he's gonna set the hook himself and you'll get that fish to the boat. And you get the fish to the boat, keep the head in the water, keep the fish just below the surface and then the crew can come over and gaff it for you. But this is the basic gear you need. Just remember for fishing inside the bay, a little bit lighter gear. And when you're offshore by the fair lawns, fishing those big leans, you need that heavier gear, 30 and 40 pound, and you'll do really well. Well, let's get back on the water, show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Here, I got a fish coming right here. Here it comes right here. Do I have a double? Double on the bucktail. Got lucky here, got two. Get in here. Look. Two rockfish. So the limit on these are 10. So I got two right there to go with my other graylings and stuff. So pretty good, it's starting to bite a little bit better for me. Nice blue rockfish. Fishing on the California Dawn with Dan Hernandez. Got another one here on the bucktails. See what these ones are. What kind of rock fish they are. There's another black. Do they have a double? Nope, oh, single. This, this is Greg, our deckhand. So, where are we approximately? I know we're not we're north that of Stinson far. Beach, it's called Duxbury Reef. Duxbury Reef? Yeah. So, this is more of the rockfish spot, and then if the weather lays down, then we go try to love the deeper spots of the link guys. Exactly. That's how it works. They're, they're in here, it's just all about the tide. I got the current's kicking right, they come on play. Yeah, so we're. It's a matter of time. Just the aftermath from that storm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, we, we might not want to actually put that on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the hitchhiker. The hitchhiker. The hitchhiker on a little yellow. You don't want to put your hand in there. Yeah. You know, the hitchhiker. Here we go. They're biting good now. Got another one. On that bucktail. Let's see what this one is. I think I'm in the hot corner right now. 
Ooh, different species. Still a rockfish, a little bit different rockfish. And that's a uh, bucktail, and that time I had an anchovy on there. B-52 bucktail with an anchovy. All right, well, let's take a little break from the action and go to the galley and show you how to cook up one of these rockfish that we're catching today for the California Dawn. Today in the galley, we're at Rose Canyon Cantina and Grill, and uh, standing next to me is Chef Joe. And Chef, thanks for having us over. And what is it you're gonna cook up for us today? I'll be preparing a grilled salmon with a Mexican spice, served with a wilted spinach, uh, black beans, and Mexican rice. Cool, so how do we get started? So uh, I'm gonna start, uh, uh, I'll be seasoning this uh, salmon with uh, Mexican spice and grill it. And you like to spray it so it doesn't stick? Yes. So my grill here. For my spinach. Oil. Minced of garlic. Let the garlic uh, cook. So there you go, the garlic. It's getting nice and brown. Yes, and then we'll start. So that spinach absorb all the garlic and the oil? Yes. So there you go, wilted spinach. For the plating of the salmon, the cilantro rice, black beans, cream sauce, and the spinach. Finish with pineapple, mango salsa. Hey chef, that salmon just looks delicious. Thank you. And I like what you have, the, the rice, the beans, the sauce. I'm gonna take a little piece of your salmon. Sauce. Sauce. Mmm. Yes. That is really delicious. Normally when I have salmon, it tastes really gamey. I think the spices you add, and the sauce brings that down. Tastes really delicious. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. This was really good. Okay. We're at Rose Canyon Cantina and Grill, and Chef Joe made the salmon dish for us. It's really good. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Okay, just got a nice fish here. Here he comes up to color. There we go. Okay. Now we can gaff it. All right. So here's my rockfish I just caught. Here's Captain Chris on the California Dawn. And Chris, today I know conditions were a little tough, but that, that bite inside, that stripers, is that kind of a normal thing for you guys? You know what? Uh, the stripers have been really hit and miss. I, I wouldn't say normal. Um, it is typical this time of year, fall. Mm -hmm fish do come in through the bay. Uh, we had a really great spring bite this year. That yeah, because that's what I normally year. thought. I thought it was like a early June thing type of thing. Every fall under normal conditions, fish generally come in the bay about this time of year. And then uh, some of the, you know, regular haunts around Alcatraz and Raccoon Straits. Mm -hmm. Those are all real popular spots, um, including San Pablo Bay. San Pablo Bay is a real good place for our small schoolie stripers. Now, our viewers know that there's always good rock fishing here, and they're seeing today some of the fish we're getting today and that big link cod we got today. But what are some of the other things? I know you guys do like a, a crab and rockfish combo season too? Yeah, that'll start off uh, the first Saturday in November start doing that and uh, it's usually fantastic fishing to be 
begin with. Mm -hmm. We go out and pull the crab pots. Uh, actually, we start off by fishing for the rock and ling, and then we come back in on our way back in, we pull the crab. Pick, pick up the crabs. Yeah. And that's all dungeonous crab? Yeah. Cool. All right, well, thanks, man. We had a lot, a lot of fun. Okay, we're going to take a little break from the action here aboard the California Dawn, and when we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. Did you know the Golden Gate Bridge opened to traffic on May 28th? Was it 1907, 1977, or 1937? That's right, it was 1937. For this week's tip of the week, I want to talk to you a little bit about coming up here in Northern California to go fishing. You know, the weather changes a lot, conditions change all the time. It does anywhere you go, but especially up here in Northern California. So you got to be prepared for that. You never know if you're going to be fishing inside the bay, like how we started out this morning, or fishing outside for those big rockfish. And certain times of year, they get white sea bass here, nice halibut, and salmon too. You know, they even do tuna fishing occasionally out of the Bay Area. Last season we were here, we got lots of albacore. So that's this week's tip of the week. When you come fish up here in the Bay Area, bring a little bit of everything. Make sure you got gear to fish inside the bay and gear to fish outside in the deeper water for those big rockfish. Well, I want to thank the crew. The crew did a great job. Chris, Greg on the deck here aboard the California Dawn. Just lots of fun fishing with the guys. My first time fishing out of Berkeley and I had lots of fun. Well, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing, and I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing.